Hey everybody, welcome back to Grace with Paul Gray. We know that Jesus, truth personified, set us free. Free from religion and free from human effort to try to somehow win God's approval. Well, today we're going to look at what that freedom looks like and how it's different from religion. It looks like unconditional love and grace. Instead of a religious-based organization or institution where there are rules and regulations, it's living in community with a group of people where everything is based on unconditional love. A community where there is no condemnation, no shame, no judgment, no fear, no control, no hierarchy, no membership agreements. My friend Ralph Harris posted this earlier this week. He said, our father tore up the records and every regulation at the cross. No debt remains. And then he quoted Colossians 2, 13 to 15. This realm of death describes our former state, for we were held in sin's grasp, but now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return, for we are for forever alive and forgiven all our sins. We are free. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a pro procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. Ralph goes on to say, we cannot pay him back, neither does he want it. That would be insulting to him and the staggering display of his love and grace, which he still likes displaying. It's his style, have you noticed? It's the new covenant, after all. And Ralph concludes with, at the risk of adding to the story, the prodigal's father threw a parade in front of his neighbors as if to say, he's my son, he is for me, and I'll give him all that I want, no matter how scandalous it seems to you. I'll show you who he really is. See, friends, when you discover and really know that Christ is in you and that he did that as part of his finished work at the cross, he made you a new creation that is pure and holy and right with God and fit for God to live in without fault and that you are one with God, united in union with God already and forever, that is the greatest discovery you will ever make. The result of that discovery means you are already loved, accepted, and forgiven by God. Christ is in you, and you're in Christ permanently. You don't have to, and you literally can't do anything to get God any closer to you, to get God to bless you anymore, to appease God, to measure up to what God wants or you think he wants. It's all done. It is finished for you and everyone. Paul wrote in Colossians 2, 20, 21, what had happened to him and to us. He said, my old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one, Christ, lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself up for me and dispenses his life into mine. So that is why I don't view God's grace as something minor or peripheral. For if keeping the law could uh, release God's righteousness to us, Jesus would have died for nothing. And one more quote from the Apostle Paul. This tells us how this freedom works. Paul said, By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his, his grace within me was not without effect. Nope. I worked harder than all of them. He's talking about the disciples and the apostles and the other Christian leaders. Yet, not I, but the grace of God that was in me. 
Paul said he no longer worked like he used to when he was a religious zealot. Now, you know, he didn't just sit on the couch and eat bonbons. He did a lot of things, but not by his own work. It was the grace of God, Jesus himself working as him. We are free. And now Christ, the grace of God in us, empowers us. That is the greatest discovery you'll ever find. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.